Hello, welcome back. So glad you're here. Today we're going to be making seven different wreath bases using five different methods. This first one is the pull through method. The next one's going to be the cruffle method. Then we're going to do just the little ring method. I love that one. So cute. This is what they call a bubble. I've never done it before. I'm not crazy about it. And this is just a standard poof. It's a small one. We'll talk more about it later. We will get started using this buffalo check mesh. It is, a, I don't know if they call it more of a fabric mesh or it's not a poly burlap and it's not a deco mesh. So it, it's kind of a jute twine. It has some jute twine in it. So fabric, jute, whatever you want to call it. This one has a bigger weave and you can see the difference. One of those came from Hobby Lobby and one came from Michael's. This one came from Michael's, and it's only 19 feet. And they use a bigger core to start with, so it looks like the same amount, but it's not. This one from Hobby Lobby is 30 feet. If you paid the same price, one of those is a better deal, and I'm not going to tell you which one. We're going to get started by putting our zip tie on, and I put it on the crossbar kind of. And I just usually get my zip tie started so that I'm not fumbling with trying to get the one end into the other end. You can't always do that, but if you can, it's a good idea. So if I'm gonna use the pull through method, I always start with my mesh on the bottom. So that way I can pull it up. And there, I just put that on the bottom, tie the little zip tie up. Sometimes I think I put too much effort into pulling those zip ties tight. I don't think it's that difficult. We're going to get started on our inner rings. That's why I put that zip tie on the inside. And then we just kind of give ourselves a little bit of slack there. And then just start pushing it through. What you really have to watch on your push through method is that you pull all of it through evenly. And then just kind of pull that back down. Sometimes people will put their fingers in there to determine how how big the loops are. I honestly, I started this, and those loops are right in the middle of where I wanted to be. Because I want to do two different sizes. And if I'm making a bigger wreath, like a 24-inch wreath, I'll make a bigger loop. And if I'm doing something smaller, then I might do, it's more of a 20-inch wreath, and I might do like a 3-inch pull-through. And this one's right in the middle. I do like it when I make mistakes so that I can kind of point it out and then tell you kind of the fix on it. And you don't always have to redo something. You don't always have to change it up. Sometimes you just start doing the right thing and hope for the best. I do have several clients who prefer maybe a 20 inch wreath and a much lower price point because <laughs> this one says she's a wreath killer. So she doesn't want to pay $60, $75, $85 for a wreath when she's just going to kill it. So I do try to make a smaller version of some pretty wreaths so that I can come in at a you know, lower price point. That's really what started the whole chain method was just the fact that I was looking for something that didn't use as much material and didn't take too long. That way I could come in at a much lower price point. Because your average wreath is, what, 40 50 60 bucks, and the expensive one's over 100 So I tried to find something in a $25 to $35 price range. Right here's where I'm studying it going, hmm, I think that's the exact in-between where I want to be. That's where I have to decide, do I want to change up these? But then I decide not to. I just go start making bigger loops at this point. I say this all the time. When you're focused on something, you see the little details. When you finish it and see the big picture, those little things just tend to fade away. But I got three, three loops in each section. So three loops on the inner ring, three loops on the middle ring, three loops on the outer ring. So nine loops in each section. Once I got to the end of that roll of mesh, I took off the core 
And uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen me do this before. I do not attach that to the wreath frame and then attach the new one to the wreath frame. I will just overlap them a couple of inches, squish them up together there, and put a zip tie around it. It's a much cleaner way than having a start stop point on your wreath. I mean, I think we all want the back of our wreath to look pretty, and sometimes people will cover them, but if you can make it look good, then you don't have to spend the time to cover them. And I'll show you here in a minute when I pull that through, you, you can't even see it. I mean, it, and it's so funny because it always ends up that it's right there at the base. Never has it ever been at the top of a loop, but that could be just the fact that I kind of manipulate it to be that way. But yeah, it's just right there at the base. No problem. And I didn't say this earlier, but you just go in the inner ring, middle ring, outer ring, then go back to the inner ring, middle ring, outer ring. That way they're just keeping each other kind of secure in there. You're not having to do any twisting or anything. And we're at the end. And you see, I just kind of get the zip tie started. Crinkle up my mesh. This is one of those methods where you do go back and fluff out each of your poofs. They do tend to get folded up inside there, so you just want it to be full, so just pull them out. Once you do that, you are done, and you end up with this beautiful full wreath. This one's going to be a ladybug theme. Can't wait to share that with you. Now this one, I'm going to do it backwards. I'm only going to show you the first little bit because it's the exact same thing. It's just a smaller poof. See, it's a much smaller poof. And instead of going the other direction, which I did in the last one, this time I'm going, like, I guess the last time I went to the right of the ring. And this time I'm going to the left of the ring. I only show you that so that you can determine which way's easier. It depends on how you keep your mesh, if you're left-handed, right-handed, or some people, you just have different comfort levels. And so I just like to show the different options so that you can determine which way works best for you. We'll just do one more set of this because you got the idea on the other one. I just wanted to show you kind of going the opposite direction for a second. But this is a good time to say thank you so much for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Would love if you would consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, sharing with your friends. We are definitely still growing, not nearly as fast as we were, but thank you all so much. And here's the finished product here. It looks just the same as the other one because you can't really tell them side by side, but you saw in the picture how they are very, very different in size. One's about 20 inches, one's about 24 inches. Just do all your little poofing and you're done. And now we move on to the cruffle. And we do two different sizes in the cruffle so you can see the difference as well. It's a lot of fun. And these are, so far it's 10 inch meshes. Everything I used today was a 10, either nine and a half or 10, 10 and a half inch mesh. So I just call it a 10 inch mesh. Um, and then we did a use a five and a half, and on one of them I used a 21. Just kind of give you ideas on the different ones. But we are cutting this, our cruffle, in 25 inch lengths. I typically don't put my mesh together to cut it, but it really worked out pretty well, so it was good. But yeah, 25 inches to make the cruffle. We're just going to do a couple of these to show you. Separate your mesh and then just curl in. This mesh is horrible. It's sticking to itself. Roll in a couple of three inches. Go to the other side. Do the same thing. Just roll in. I say a couple, three, four, whatever. <laughs> and on 25 inch mesh, you can go in about four inches and then just Walk yourself down to the next side. Put your pipe cleaner on. And on this size mesh, and because it's so sticky to itself, 
I go ahead and put it on the um, wreath frame as I make them. Sometimes I'll just make a bunch of them kind of assembly line and make up a bunch and then just put them all on. But with this 10 inch mesh and it would just take too much room and then it would just stick to itself so bad. So I just make a cruffle and put it on. Now here you could see there, and I'll show you again in a second, but I did one on the crossbar. I did a peach one on the crossbar, a peach one on the crossbar, a green one in the middle of that. And then on the outer ring, I just reversed that and put the green ones on the crossbars and the peach one in the middle. And it ended up nice and full, so you didn't need any more than that. Just twist it around. Now here you can see. And this is the inner ring that I was putting this first round on. The next set what goes on the third ring from the inside. So this one's on the inner ring. Then the next round goes on the third ring from the inside. And I found that I do that as opposed to the outside ring. The outside ring would give you a little bit bigger wreath. But if you put it on the outside, they tend to want to like spin to the back. So I always try to put everything on the third ring from the inner circle. That way it has, it can rest on that last ring. Hope that makes sense. Now we're on to the smaller cruffle. This is a five and a half inch. This came from Michael's. Although it's weird, their, all their mesh is like $9.99 unless it's on sale. And you just get less. Like the shorter, you get 45 feet. The 10 inch, you get like 30 feet or 35 feet. And then the 21 inch, you only get like 19 or 20 feet. It's weird. Who knows? So these, I did not cut them at the 25 inches. I went ahead and did 20 inches on this one. Because it's such a, it's a more narrow mesh, so I thought 25 might be overkill. And it did end up a little, a little light, a little see-through, but I think I'm just going to use different ribbons and stuff to kind of make sure I get it filled in nicely. This is the same process. Just roll in the edge a little bit. And I use the um, little clothespin it's a plastic clothespin just to hold it on this mesh I sometimes I don't use a plastic clothespin but on the narrow mesh like this I find it helps to kind of weight it down because if I don't and then when I'm trying to walk it to the other side it just kind of goes everywhere the weight really does help in that situation and I'm sorry I'm off screen here I'd moved my camera around several times because I was doing so many different bases. Hopefully you like this kind of video. Y'all let me know in the comments um, if you like seeing multiple bases or if you'd prefer to see start one and finish it all the way through. So this just gives you a good idea of different methods and even how you can work within one method and still get different wreath bases. And here, peach on the crossbars, greens in the middle, just like the big one. See here, I was not using the clothespin, and that's kind of when I determined I don't like it not without the clothespin. And I did kind of assembly line a few of these because they're so much smaller. Assembly line stuff does make, make your work go faster. But like I said, with those 10-inch cruffles, they just would stick to each other so bad I didn't want to deal with it. So you got peach on the crossbar, greens in the middle. We'll just finish this one up. And it's so cute. It's little, but it's so cute. When I spin it over here, you'll see. I love it. You just kind of make sure everything's pushed to the front. But yeah, it's so cute. Oh my goodness. I love it. And yeah, let me know in the comments too, which one is your favorite? What do you like? What method do you like? Which wreath do you like? What colors do you like? This one, this is the little ring one. It's going to be fun. Those are, that's where I was saying it was like nine and a half, ten and ten and a half inch meshes because 
each company kind of they vary some so I just call it a 10 inch mesh altogether went ahead and stacked these up as well these were cut at 10 inches for the rings and I just rolled out enough that I could get two cuts out of each time I had to roll the mesh it'll just cut that work in half because if I get two cuts out of every time I unroll the mesh then it's faster just separate your cuts and you can see I have my bow dabra over there it's gonna hold my mesh when I ring it up <laughs> ring it up sounds like I am buying it oh my gosh what's wrong with me <laughs> And I did all of them the same in this particular one. I did green on the bottom, yellow next, and pink on top. You can always mix it up. Honestly, I don't know that it's going to make a difference once you do it. What's on top, what's on bottom, what's in the middle. I don't think it matters at all. Because it all just looks like a bunch of rings once you get it on there. But I am a tad bit OCD, so I just want to do it the same each time. And these pop cleaners are cut, oh, I don't think I've mentioned that this whole video. These are cut at a half inch. A half inch. <laughs> They're cut in half. <laughs> oh, Lord, so that's six inches. I wasn't sure how fat the bundles would be, so I, I cut them in half. I think everything else was cut in thirds. Because this is the only time when I had three different meshes in one bundle. So yeah, these were, and you can tell I have to wrap it around a lot more. And these, I got four bundles in each section. So it was 24 bundles. Dang, I'm almost at the end and I don't even know if I've been saying all the stuff I'm supposed to say. I will go back and listen to it and try to correct anything that needs correcting or put the information in the description bar is the description a bar no it's a section do you think it's late at night when I'm doing this hmm probably sorry about that and I did this one this particular wreath was actually the second one and you'll notice again when I go to attach this to the frame that this is on the outer ring and that's how I came to the fact that I need to put it on the third ring from the inside because this one they just kept wanting to spin out and kind of be backwards so that's when I but I kind of determined that when it was too late to go back and change them all so I just kept them on the outer ring but there it is all finished another beautiful full wreath I mean these bases are so pretty. I mean, you could almost just stick a sign on them and not even put ribbons or bows or anything. And they're just, they would be so pretty. Now this one, this is the 21 inch mesh. And it is just a poof, just a standard poof. I don't even do the chain method on it. I kind of wanted to, to see how it was doing the the way most people do it where you put it on the frame and then you just measure out squish it up and then put it on the frame and then measure out you'll see I didn't like it just for the record hmm that's why I like the chain method it's a lot faster too this one I couldn't determine well let me tell you like you can see here there's where the per first gather is it's on the 10 inch mark on my mat. So I just scroll down there, scroll down, uh, slide down there and go to the 20 inch mark. So it's 10 inches. I play around with it and see, do I like to put in the pipe cleaner from up under it or do I like putting it on top of it? I just, I played with it quite a bit, and I just, like I said, I didn't really like any of the method to do that. So, I will stick with the chain method when I'm actually making one of these poofs. 
but I wanted to try something different, show an alternative. As I always, always say, figure out what works best for you. I've had people comment and said that uh, I wasted time, that you, you do double work when you do the chain method. But as I've explained, it's breaking down the steps makes it easier for some people. So even if you waste a little bit of time, you definitely don't do double work. But if you waste a little bit of time, at least it breaks it down and makes it more fun and pleasurable for people to craft. And sometimes I, I get a lot of comments with people saying, thank you for making it easier. Thank you. I will now try to make a wreath again. And so I love that. That's, that's the whole idea. I think everybody should be able to craft and enjoy it. And then I kind of determined that I liked putting the pipe cleaners, which are at six inches. These were cut in half because the 21 inch mesh is a lot more bulky. But yeah, I ended up putting them on the frame and then just putting the poofs into that. That worked a lot better. And the outer ring, I did 12 inch poofs. So I just would attach it to, and you could do that beforehand. A lot of people do. They'll put the pipe cleaners on there and, and make it kind of a makeshift work wreath. Work wreaths cost about six to ten dollars, depending on where you get them. And they're the ones that have the pipe cleaners or stuff already attached. I much prefer a dollar for my wreath frames and a few cents for pipe cleaners. But you can see here, you put it at the 10 inch mark, scroll down here to the 22 inch, and then just attach it. That made it a little easier, but I still, you know, I would just as soon do a big long chain and just attach them as I go around. And when I said the outer ring, I meant the outer ring of poofs. You can see I am again on the third ring from the inside. So when I said outer ring, that just meant the outer ring of poofs. And at the end, just cut it off. I cut off a little extra. Not just, you know, you could cut it right off where you attach it, but I always like to do a little longer so that you can just either attach it to the wreath frame and have it lay flat, or you could tuck it back into one of the poofs. And this is one that you have to kind of separate them out. This is going to be an interesting one once I complete it. I kind of have an idea what I want to do with it, and I love the green. But it is a little sparse. It's a, a value type mesh. And you can also tell that I did crossbars on the inner ring, and then I did it in the middle on the outer ring, in, the, in between the crossbars. That way it's kind of offset. Now this next one, this one is a mesh from Joann's. I had that in slow motion because it went too fast. And so I felt like I had to talk in slow motion. <laughs> I didn't. Oh goodness. This is what they call a bubble wreath. I've seen many people do it. It's basically 10 inch poofs. They're just squished closer together. I started off using pipe cleaners and I, I sped through this part. I kind of speeded up the, the video because I do not like it and I'm not going to use those. So I decided to use zip ties, little zip ties. So I take all that apart because I just, I was not going to sit there and twist all those and figure out if I needed to go from the top or the bottom, so it's like, no. So after I get all of those undone, I just go in and zip tie it. And because I am working from the top, I zip tie it on the top. The mesh is on the top. And this is kind of like the other. You just put it on the 10 inch mark, measure out 10 inches. It did take me a second too to determine the best way and fastest way to, to do the zip tie. It wasn't too bad. But it's still, it was a lengthy thing. It was a lengthy wreath. I'm going to 
cut out a bunch of it, but I just want to show you a couple of these. And I went two and a half poofs per section. You can see here, I'm going to measure it out. The first one I didn't have to measure because I'd taken them apart, so they were already kind of crinkly. But yeah, you just measure from the 10 to the 20 if you have a mat. If you're not using a mat, then just measure 10 inches. I found it better to put the zip tie from the outside kind of pointing in and then tie it. So I'd put two full ones in the section and then the third one would jump the crossbar. So it's basically every third one is jumping the crossbar on the inner ring. Now when you go to the outside, it's a little different. I do three full ones and the fourth one jumps the crossbar because it's a little bigger. So I wanted to be able to kind of offset them and to have it more full. And here's a couple of them on the outside ring. They kind of, the bubbles folded over in half. They didn't really seem to poof too much. So I just let them do that. So it's kind of folded so it's got two layers per poof and this one I kind of went from the inside to the out with putting the zip tie on and the thing about this too after you do all of this then you have to go back and cut off all those zip ties I didn't do it as I went because I find picking up the tool and putting it down and picking it up and putting it down and picking it down you know doing all that takes longer than just going at the end and snip 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 so yeah, now we're done. I zip tie the ends to the wreath frame. And you can see that I attached on that outer, the outer row of poofs, they're on the third from the inside bar as well. I kind of decided that that's where I'm gonna live, on that third bar. And it's a full wreath, it's a pretty wreath. I love the color. I just, it was a lot, it was a lot to do. Maybe I'm a, a lazy wreath maker. I don't know. I just want it to be quicker. And I think that's why people get discouraged is because it's just so time consuming and sometimes cumbersome and, and the steps are too many. So if we can make it simplified and still get to the pretty part, then it's good. I will say too that when you put your poofs together like this or if you do the pull through method, it does make it a lot more dense and so it's a lot more firm and it's going to last longer if you put your poofs out and you don't do that many poofs and they're 10 inches they do tend to break down over time with the heat but if you're a wreath killer and you're not going to keep it that long it's a cheaper price point i do like the back of this it's very clean now you can see here i'm going to kind of cross the the two rows because the gap is a little too uniform. You can kind of see it looks just like a row. Like here on the left side, you can see it's just a straight line of gap. Yet on the right, you can see gaps and, and those can be filled in with ribbons and different things. But if it's too uniform, then it, I don't like the way that looks. But again, this is probably not the method I would use if I was wanting something like this. I would definitely go with the pull through method and I have some really cool stuff coming up because the sign I want to use on this, probably the wrong color. I'll have to do a different base, but ugh, so cute. It's kind of a throwback retro look. Love it, can't wait to make it. So let me know, do you prefer seeing a bunch of bases with different methods or would you prefer seeing a wreath from start to finish? Let me know in the comments. Until then, here's another video you could check out and we will catch you on the next one.